Learning to program in self-study. Many people dream of it because they are very interested in programming but do not want to spend money on a professional training or go to university directly. Doing self-study, learning to program on your own, sounds very difficult at first. However, I can assure you that if you put the necessary energy and time into the project, it is definitely possible. Hello and welcome to the Jay Sparrow Start Programming Channel. My name is Ben and in this video I will share 10 years of experience on the subject self-study and give you important tips that will help you to get the results you want faster. I would like to encourage you in general to learn programming on your own because it is really worth it, both financially and in terms of personal growth. Let's start with the obvious hurdles of learning to code that have to be overcome in self-study. First of all, you have no one forcing you to work. Of course, one can argue that this is also the case with normal studies. But with self-study, of course, there is nothing at stake that you could lose. The mere fact that you can't complete your studies and then have to look for alternatives is enough motivation for many students at university to do their work. In self-study, this possibility of losing something is missing, which makes it difficult for some people to pull themselves together and really put the work into the topic. But there are tricks that you can use to motivate yourself and I'll talk about them later in the video. In addition, it is of course also the case that you normally do not have a contact person when you learn programming on your own. However, there are a few tricks that you can use to always get help when you need it, but in a university it is of course easier to quickly find someone you can ask if you do not understand a certain subject. And of course, the common thread is often missing when learning in self-study. You can single-handedly learn what you want, when you want, and for how long you want. The curriculum in an apprenticeship or course of study, on the other hand, gives you a natural feeling of a certain path that can be worked through in a focused manner. But I have to say it again, with the right approach, this is not a problem for someone who is learning to program on their own. So there are a few obvious hurdles to overcome if you want to learn to code on your own. However, for all these hurdles there are also corresponding techniques and methods of how to quickly overcome them. Now I've listed the negative sides of self-study for you, but as I said, don't worry. Of course there are solutions for all these problems and I've also learned programming completely by myself in the last years. I have implemented many cool projects and built up an extensive skill set. And of course it is also the case that programming alone has disadvantages. On the other hand, it also offers some benefits that are often simply ignored. For example, you can focus entirely on topics that really interest you and become an absolute specialist in them. You can also implement projects according to your own interests that don't have some very short and very strict deadlines. And in addition, self-study is perfectly suited to be integrated into everyday life to a lesser extent than other traditional learning methods. So you can still go about your work, meet friends, take care of your family and still learn to code on the other side. But enjoying the benefits doesn't need much guidance from my part, I think you can do that on your own. So let's get back to the cons and more specifically how to overcome these hurdles. The first hurdle that we should address is that you don't have, shall I say, a forced drive in self-study. Of course, if you don't do the necessary work in a real degree program, you won't get through your studies well either. In self-study, however, you have nothing to lose for the time being, which can greatly promote procrastinating and letting yourself slide. A certain amount of structure helps here and building up a real fascination for the topic as well. Because one thing should be clear right away. Those who are not really interested in programming or those who are not fascinated by it, they don't even have to start with self-study. Because then you stop immediately after the first few problems and look for something else to learn, which is okay, just not what we are talking about here. So with structure I mean studying regularly at specific times and with a clear study schedule. This is especially important at the beginning when you are still learning the basics of a new programming language. Otherwise, you won't get very far. The goal should be to make learning to code a habit because that's how you make guaranteed regular progress and get closer to your goal step by step. So write down which concepts or topic you would like to learn in general, set goals and work towards achieving them regularly. With that you don't need a forced study plan and you can get into a routine without going to university or an apprenticeship. Another important thing to learn from self-study is to go to the right places for help if you get stuck with your own research. It is very important to look for help regardless of what you're learning but especially in programming. And I mentioned the independent research for questions very consciously because one thing is very important when programming in general. 
you have to learn how to get the information you need to help you. This is a skill that every programmer needs and accordingly the disadvantage of not always being able to ask a question is also an advantage. You're directly forced to train the skill of self-research. So if you have any questions, always search the internet for answers first. Ask your search engine as many questions about programming as possible and very important, it is best to formulate these questions in English and generally look for answers in English-speaking countries. Most of the programming community speaks English and most resources on the subject are available in English as well. And once that's out of the way, it's also important to have someone you can ask a question here and there should your own research fail or take too long. There are many communities online for a wide variety of programming languages and programming areas where you can exchange ideas with other developers and ask questions. Find such a community, join it and exchange ideas with the people there. This not only has the advantage that you can ask experienced programmers questions, but also that you develop a sense of community among like-minded people, which can often fuel motivation. At our community forum, you will have a place to exchange ideas with other programmers, and especially if you're a Java programmer, you will even have more advantages with our JSparrow members area. You can register in our members area for free, it is the perfect place to improve your skills, and you will see what we are offering additionally to you. I will also be there. All in all, we have made it our mission to help programmers with a solution at hand to fix code smells, code bugs and also to refactor source code in general. The best part is that JSparrow is free to use. You can just download it and use 20 free refactoring rules forever. If that sounds interesting to you, then just click the link in the video description. To finalize this topic, there was the disadvantage that a certain common thread was missing during self-study. A very big problem that a lot of people who want to learn programming have is that they keep switching their focus to other topics, which in the long run will ensure that you don't really learn anything properly. In my experience, this point is really the hardest when it comes to self-study because there are just so many interesting topics within programming that you can and want to learn. One day you feel like dealing with game development, the next day you want to learn how AI or artificial intelligence works and then you suddenly get interested in the development of web applications. And as much as I hate to say it, if you follow these mood swings, you won't get very far, in no area. Proper focus on a particular topic is really incredibly important. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't look at other topics, but don't change focus too often. When you decide to learn something, make a commitment and don't stop halfway because you found something better. Because if you do it once, you will do it a second time and stop halfway through the third learning project for something new that you're sure to stop halfway through as well. Really, just wholeheartedly do something that you have previously decided upon. Because when you do that, you will also learn something that you learn at the university or an apprenticeship. To finish things. A skill that you really, really urgently need as a programmer. And with such a focus, you can build up a common thread much better. Because if you want to learn a topic in particular, you can deal much more intensively with the question of which things you should learn and in which order. You can watch video courses or read books on the subject and really pull this one topic through with a common thread without being constantly distracted by other topics. But that's it for the video. If you liked my tips, I would be very happy about the subscription or a like. We regularly bring new programming related videos like this one. And if you want to stay on the ball as far as programming goes and you want to learn something useful, then I would really appreciate a subscription. With that in mind, I say goodbye, wish you a wonderful day and of course, have fun programming.